said we have successfully frozen their brand, critical race theory, into the public conversation and are steadily driving up negative perceptions. We will eventually turn it toxic as we put all the various cultural insanities under that brand category. The goal is yep. to have the public re I love how Chris Rufo's like, yep. Yep. <laughs> We're not hiding it. And not only that, you're blasting it out to your entire to your entire audience. Which I think is like 15,000 people tops. But anyway, yeah. let's, why would you, this is such a, such a strategic blunder here that For she's her. actually promoting this stuff. Not, not, no, I, I think it's a joy read. It's a blunder on her part. Um, I disagree. Really? Not for her audience because yeah, but he, her audience is already in the, in the, I understand for that, her. but that's yeah. all she's perceptualizing this as. Okay. Because because for Rufo is admitting, which mm -hmm. is true, what's happening is that they're just trying to to shove every social justice term under mm -hmm. critical race theory, the umbrella of critical race theory, which is what's happening. I don't and I don't personally really have a problem doing that because they're all so similar. tied together. Yeah, exactly. yeah, they're all so similar, and no one has really. For it's so funny for all the fucking people that are crying about that's not critical race theory none of them has really codified what the difference is between all these various fields of what the contention is here. i agree okay you know yeah they can't come out and point and go okay listen the the kimberly crenshaw's and the robin d'angelo's have this specific difference between them that's necessary and important they can't do that right. <laughs> it's like we're arguing complete semantics Exactly. Read something crazy in the newspaper and immediately think critical race theory. We have decodified the term and will recodify it to annex the entire range of cultural constructions that are unpopular with Americans. Aren't you just taking... Well, it's important why those cultural constructions are unpopular with Americans. Like uh, Joy Reid would argue that they're unpopular with Americans because she's fallen for the narrative that you know whites are so disillusioned because they're losing political power, right. which I don't think is true. But I think Chris would categorize that completely differently. He would categorize the cultural constructions being more in the category of like whiteness and whiteness mm -hmm. studies and intersectionality, all of these cultural constructions that right. obviously everyone is like mad about. Well, I think this is where if I was Chris, I would have said either, well, well Joy, do you disagree? Yes. Do you not like all that woke stuff? Or to say, well, what is the difference between this woke stuff and the critical race theory? What's the distinction that you're making? Yeah. To see what kind of insane answer that she would try to stumble her way through. I know. It'd be great. Because that's what you, <laughs> that's the problem is that that's what you need. This is all optics battle. Totally. If you have Joy stumbling to answer a very simple question after she makes a strong allegation against Chris, she looks like a moron. Yeah, it's true. Something tells me she would just default to the, I'm the one asking questions here. I'm the interviewer. I'm the school teacher. I'm here to school you. That's That seems to be her standard out. I think it would be funny to her, ask her. I think that's her emergency ripcord in case <laughs> of conversation exactly. levering. I don't think that'd be her first answer. I think she would do the same thing that Hunter did, which is mm. the common mistake that they all do, which is they'd say, Critical race theory is just about looking at racism on a systemic level instead of an individual level. Yeah. And that's when you say, actually, the term systemic or institutional racism was created by Stokely Carmichael in 1978 and has nothing to do with critical race theory specifically and was created and existed way before critical race theory ever came about. So no, you can teach the concept of systemic racism and not teach critical race theory. Try again. Yeah. Which is important, I mean, because we're we're actively fighting systemic racism and we didn't need critical race theory to do it, right? Right. Yeah, nobody's happy about these. Nobody likes the racial disparities if they're propagated unfairly. People, people have an idea that these racial disparities are propagated through, you know, fundamentally people not living up to their potential or not living up to uh, what society expects of them. I mean, there's, you, you can look at it and we should look at it to see if that's the case. 
people are more fixated on the fairness of it than anything, though. Because if if you right. know if the if the races run fairly and people are going to win and people are going to lose, right? Yeah, exactly. That's how the but so much of the critical race theory just assumes unfairness from the get go. You got to understand going into this, guys. It's totally unfair. Let's figure out why it's unfair. Stuff well, that annoys it's you just a lens, it. Adam. What's that? It's just, a, it's just a lens, Adam. It's just a lens, huh? It's just a lens. Yeah, the unfairness <laughs> lens. The racism lens. The racism everywhere lens. Right. And yeah. the, the lens that tells you, and this was so hilarious about it, the lens doesn't even tell you anything useful. It just tells you that there's a disparity. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't need a lens to tell me that there's a disparity in the outcome. I can I can figure that out on my own. No, that's not true, though. The The lens does tell you the the cause of the disparity is racism. That is the lens. No, it doesn't even tell you that. It doesn't actually even tell you that. Really? That's the, that's why the whole con this whole concept of systemic racism is so fucking stupid. It doesn't even tell you the cause of racism. All okay. it's saying is there is a outcome that creates racially disparate results, mm -hmm. and they label it systemic racism. Mm -hmm. So they're not even saying what, that the cause is racism. They're just saying the results are de facto racism. Yeah. Yeah, that's the It's the dumbest that thing made. ever. Yeah. Because most people think racism, think of conceptualized racism as a cause. Yes, exactly. Which is the problem. Because you're but, like, we know right. we have to find the cause. It's just called systemic racism. And you're right. like, what the fuck? I thought we already found the cause. And Why the, are you that, calling it systemic racism? That's the grift. That's it the is grift. the grift, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sad. Critical race theory. No, not the term. And we'll recodify it to annex the entire range of cultural constructions that are unpopular with Americans. Aren't you just taking wokeness stuff that annoys you and calling it critical race theory? No, not, not at all. The idea of the codification and decodification of language comes from the critical pedagogist Paulo Freire. And my strategy now is to doing, take now these... Now you're doing pedagogy, Christopher? Yes. Come on. To take these techniques... She's so disappointed. In what does that even I mean? I told you... I know. I was mystified by this. I was going to look up pedagogy, but I didn't look it up. Do you know what no, pedagogy, no, no. pedagogy means? That just means, yeah, that just means like how you teach uh, other people and, te and children. You know, oh. like it's, it's, you know, when you talk about critical pedagogy, you're t that's all this awful shit mm -hmm. is really not critical race theory. It's critical pedagogy. Mm -hmm. That's where like, it's all oh, these how teachers. To, how to turn kids into activists. Is yes, what exactly. Is. Exactly. Right. Like, like the chart, the chart that the Smithsonian uh, put okay. up with the white stuff, that's critical pedagogy. Okay. And that's why it was so bizarre when Sam was like, well, this is just a teacher. I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> this is a teacher. They're trying to teach people this nonsense. Okay. But I don't understand what joy means. I don't either. Like, you do doing pedagogy, pedagogy now? You're like, doing oh, pedagogy now? Like, oh, come on, like, Chris. I, I don't understand. Like she that. caught him masturbating or something. What is this fucking... I'm supposed to be afraid of pedagogy now? What is this? Right. I don't even... Yeah, I have no clue what she's talking about in this. Chris, now you're doing pedagogy? Come on. Pedagogy? That's where we're taking this? And, it's such a and, crazy term, too. Like, I I don't... I Like, this is the first I have encountered... Well, no, I've heard the term pedagogy, but I just... I mm -hmm. never expended the effort to actually know what it means. Well, and he's referencing... Someone actually DM or damned or super chatted us this, that the guy who really laid the foundation for all the critical pedagogy is this guy, Paulo Fiera. Mm -hmm. And he has a book called The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. And that's what, so he's sort of saying, oh, I'm just doing what they do by codifying the language. That's, that's the argument he's giving. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't even think Joy understands the argument because, I don't know, she's just in her own fucking world here. <laughs> yeah. You, so... Language is important to teaching because there are all these implications with language that a lot of people don't recognize. Like right. the whole idea behind, so many people don't recognize that you're creating negative stereotypes just by teaching the power dynamic between the races. You're like, yes. well, there's an implication here. <laughs> don't you understand? No, we're just talking about facts here. Well, people are going to walk away with a certain kind of stereotype. If you don't see it, then... Sorry, your brain's off, right? Mm -hmm. It's so funny because there are all these negative stereotypes about black people, and they are hyper aware of them, hyper sensitive. I'll, to I'll them. be right back. You tell everyone about the negative stereotypes. No, of black I'm, well, I'm going to continue with the video, obviously.
and use them against their own ideology. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, Joy, my strategy has been enormously successful. According to the Economist oh, magazine poll, 64% mm -hmm. of Americans... So Joy jumps in there. Oh, yeah, it's successful among conservatives, I know. but it's, it's not. Wait, you, you, I thought you were gone. I was well, taking I want, over the I don't show. Want, I don't want you to watch the end of the video when I'm not here. But Well, run and take your break. I'm going to take my, you, you keep the video. We'll rewind it. Don't you okay. worry. We'll rewind it for you. I got plenty of, con I can do, I'll do a whole, sh I'll do a whole sitch and a half. <laughs> All by my lonesome. That's uh, funny. God, I just, I, I don't, I have a, I have a problem conceptually just with, and maybe it's me, maybe I'm actually wrong about this, but I, I conceptualize democratic politics as the, and maybe it's my own bias because I consider myself a centrist and I like to think of myself as the kingmaker, the one in power, the one who could be swayed, the one who could vote Republican, who could vote Democrat. You don't know. So you need to cater to me. My vote is up in the air. So I'm actually the one that matters. Like a lot of th these political conversations, they don't matter when people's minds are already made up. They're already, there are certain people that are going to vote Democrat no matter what. There are certain people that are going to vote Republican no matter what. And those people kind of section them off from the conversation. So when, when Joy jumps in here and says, oh, yeah, you're making a big impression with conservatives, which is meaningless. I think, no, Joy. He's not just making an, an impression with conservatives. He's making an impression with you know, moderate, centrist type people who just don't want racism taught in public schools to their children. That is the actual argument, the substantive argument that Rufo is keyed in on, that he's making an argument against, that Joy Reid is not even countered with any kind of argument all she's done is obfuse, obfus, obfuscate obfuscate that's a weird word obfuscate 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 see that word is impossible to say every time my brain dials it up for me to say i i sense the tragedy coming <laughs> i sense it coming from a mile away obfuscate obfuscate okay we'll obfuscate. back obfuscate we'll back it up a little bit but i'm curious on your it's a great word. I love that word. Yeah, it's great. This jo that's Joy Reid's brand. Her entire brand is off obfuscation. Yeah. <laughs> Ob <laughs> like the word itself. Just I know. saying it obfuscates it's the, the entire word. word. Yeah, it's it's impossible to it obfuscates itself, even in pronunciation. Yes. So but Joy Reid is making the argument that Chris Rufo is having a big effect in conservative circles, which are just are meaningless because nobody listens to conservatives anyway. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm making the argument that, no, I think Chris Rufo is speaking to the moderate centrist who is worried about people teaching racism in their public schools. They don't, you know, they don't have the money to actually go to some private school option and they're terrified their kid is going to come home with like a, a terrible racist. Right. So. But people you, in the chat are trying to t teach us how to say obfuscate. Yeah. <laughs> Including Sargon and Aiden. Really? Hey, oh, guys. my God. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, he please teach us how to speak properly. Ob, few, skate. Oh, it's so easy. Ob, it's so easy. Ob, ob, few, skate. Now, see, when you try to say it all at once, that's where you get in the problem. Ob, few, skate. All right. I think Alex has it down for you. Ob, few, skate. Excavated. Ob, few, skate. Ob, few, skate. Great. Now, if I could only say it in a British accent. Ob, few, skate. It's now no. It's now no. What critical race? What's up? You mean proto-American? I'm gonna accent. back. I'm gonna back it up a little okay. bit because you want to hear. You this is that thing this up, is, Isn't this only halfway through? You back that thing up, okay? This this only halfway through though. Or is this? This the is whole... the first segment. There's a second segment after. This, this is a longer segment. Oh, I guess it is. Yeah. Yeah. This is the whole thing. Right. If I describe Joy Reid as smug, would you agree with that? That characterization, or is that? Uh, I would say smug C word. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. You're going even further. I like it. Yeah. Look at that. Look at the smug Look at that face. I know. Disgusting. She's like, I got you, buddy. <laughs> you can't mess with me. I got my talking points on you. Ah, you're a Republican operative. I don't have to talk about any actual like substantive points whatsoever. Does joy know that a lot, they're like people vote. There are Republicans that people vote Republican. <laughs> Does she know that? 
Does she know right. that the how close these elections are? Well, this is just this is just red meat for her audience. Oh, That's okay. all it is. She's and, like the Rush Limbaugh type. Well, it's so dumb. She's literally being a useful idiot for fucking socialism mm -hmm. and Marxism specifically. And she's too stupid to realize that she's turning her entire audience into being useful idiots for anti-liberal CRT.